and sister. Hi, brothers and sister. Guess who's back? It's me. Oh, Peter. Oh, from State 122. Welcome to another Last Shelter survival video. I've been playing this game for a bit over a year, I'm so damn close to 300 million kills, and this week, I'm the president, baby! If you like the video, or the video just simply help you a little bit, please help me back by liking, subbing, and sharing. I would love to be able to just say, hey bro, just pick those three heroes, and then you can forget about it. Well, you know what? It doesn't work like that. It's just not how the game works. There are way more things to take into consideration. So instead, I'll explain you how to select your heroes depending on multiple factors. If you listen and pay attention, by the end of this video, you'll be able to tell exactly which hero you should use. I'm gonna try to be as clear and concise as possible, there's a lot of information in there, hopefully you get it all, but if there's something unclear, um, don't hesitate to ask any question in the comment section. Making the right hero choice and investing in the right one is super important, especially now that you're done playing Farmville, since you were smart enough to watch my previous videos. Anything that's not orange as a combat hero is totally useless. SPLIT THEM NOW! If you're watching this on a Thursday, if not, wait for Thursday to come. I personally divide the heroes into four categories. First, you have the Disabler, the one that casts Silence, that casts Suppress, those precious skills. Then, the second are the Buffers, they're the one that buff heroes with more attack or taking less damage. Then, you have those crazy, hard to get, son of a season heroes so s1 s2 s3 and then finally you have the aoe heroes the one that hit multiple lanes we're gonna start talking about the passive skills if you like starting with the dictator skills the dictator skills will increase the amount of troop your hero can hold this is the first skills you want to max out then we have the range this concept can be a bit hard to understand, but it's actually pretty freaking simple. The range work as you need to count your hero lane as well, so it's not only the range of the enemy lanes. Here's an example to try to clarify. If your hero has a range of 2 and you put it in the second row, it will only hit the first row of the enemy as you need to count your own row. So a hero with 3 range in second position we'll be able to hit row one and two of the enemy that's basically it range normally is the first thing you look at before making an apc because you want to make sure that all those nice skills are have the right range because if not well they're not just being used and it's total waste sometime your combination would be awesome but sadly the range just doesn't work together finally on range, there are two tactics. Either you try to get your heroes to hit always the same lane, so you try to demotivate the other troops, or you try to make them attack in the back, because if the enemy's having like soldiers, sniper, snipers, you want to hit those weak as hell sniper, so that for range. Now, the target. This is the actual place where you're going to see if the skills is an area of effect skills or just hitting a single lane. This affects how many lanes you hit, but also how many lanes you're going to buff if you're using a buffing heroes. When the target says hero squad, that means it only affects your current hero. But what you really want in an ideal world is to have the target all squads in the hero formation that basically affect the three heroes in the APC and this is freaking good here bonus tip for free because I'm that type of guy when you click on the exclamation mark of a skill you can see if the skill is affected by the hero level or if it's not Usually, but not always, the skills that are affected by the hero levels are stronger. This is something 
to check out for and the only way to do it is by clicking that exclamation mark we have resistance i see it as like an armor it makes your troop takes less damage from normal troop attacks following is might this one is very important as it increases your damage output more might more damage you will make and if i had to choose between resistance and might i'll go might all the way baby following we have tactical resistance it's like the resistance but it impact the damage your troop will receive from special hero attacks so again i think personally technical resistance is better than resistance and then the last one we have is hp this one is way way better than resistance and technical resistance the game is really bad explaining how it works but basically your troops are harder to kill and it seems to be way more effective than resistance so if you have a hero that makes you have more hp is definitely a really good hero to use now the combat disable skills there's a lot of them and i won't cover them all but i'll i'll cover like the three big ones so Starting with silence. Silence makes the enemy heroes unable to cast skills, but still can attack you with normal hero attacks. Suppress, by far the best disabled skill, basically makes the enemy heroes unable to use skills, but also doesn't attack you. The enemy not attacking you makes it the best skill in the game. Hands down. And then we have mostly i believe it's all s1 s2 and s3 heroes that got those skills but we have specific hero skills such as curse flammable and counter attack those are skills that honestly i won't cover as i said I, i'm gonna try to remain basic but just go read this is the best way to learn now the moment you've been waiting for which hero should i use well to be honest it depends on so many things, but the first thing that it depends on is your luck when you recruit. So maybe you've been extremely lucky or bad lucky, but it depends really on which hero you got. So I cannot tell you like, use that combination, it's unbeatable. There's just too many of them. It also depends on which APC you want to make. Do you want to make an offensive APC? Do you want to make a defensive APC? Do you want to do a mix of both? Do you want to do a disabled APC? So that's the question you should be asking yourself when making an APC. Now, I can tell you about my easy to get favorite lineup, which consists of Forsaken, Destroyers, and Dawn. They have good DPS. Both Destroyer and Forsaken give HP boost, which I mentioned earlier is pretty freaking good. They're also like regular orange heroes, so you don't need those crazy, impossible to get orange duplicate. Actually, any orange hero with all skill unlocked are good, but some are better than others, won't lie. S1, S2, and S3 heroes are by far the best hero in the games. But, it's extremely hard to get those freaking dupes. Actually, unless you're a credit card warrior, uh, good luck getting those duplicate. The only way is by having tons of luck or with DD rewards. For any heroes, you should always focus on unlocking the detector skills and the awaken skills to maximize the amount of troops your hero can hold. Oh, and last thing, be sure when you select your hero to also take a look at the percentage of which the skill can be triggered. That can be definitely a game changer when your hero only have 10% chance of your skill to be triggered, or a skill that may be a bit less effective or powerful, but trigger 80% of the time. Well, if you're still here, thank you very much. If you fell asleep, well, wake the out but kidding aside i know it's a lot of information but the key to understanding the fight is to read the small information the game has to offer click on those heroes click on those skills um look them up and then to really understand what's going on the only way is to look at the actual fight so if that video helped you help me back by liking subbing and sharing on that note I see you guys next time, hopefully.